Optical Flares has several features for making lens flares even more realistic. So one of the features is on-lens simulations, chromatic aberration, a matte box simulation, as well as some lens orbs. So let's take a look at how that can enhance the realism of your lens flares. So here we have a quick scene where we have this lens flare flying in. And I'm going to go to the lens flare layer, go up to the effects, choose options. So it's a pretty simple lens flare, only just a couple of elements. I'm going to turn on the show background feature. And just in the preview, I'm going to turn the brightness and the scale up so it's a little easier to see what we're doing. Now the first feature shows up in the global parameters because it is applied to everything in your lens flare and it also gets saved with your preset. It's called the lens texture. Now optical flares comes with 12 high quality HD 1080p textures of on lens grime and these are pictures from real lenses. So let's click on DAG and uh, we'll shut off the show background and right away you can see we start seeing this grime that's on the lens. And it's a pretty cool effect. You can control the illumination radius so that it only shows up really at that bright point or you could turn it up really high so it always shows up. You have control over the brightness and you can also load in your own texture so then you can control the scale and the offset and all you have to do is use one of the custom slots that are right below these built-in textures. And uh, real quick, if uh, anyone's using this as a tutorial, you can load custom layers just by going into the custom slot, selecting a layer or a texture as your image. So back in the interface, you can go ahead and play around with the different textures, but there's another feature I want to show you. It's called Chromatic Aberration. Now I'm going to add another object. So I'll choose Lens Objects. We're going to add an iris. And this is just going to make it easier to see the uh, chromatic aberration. So we'll go back to the global parameters. Turn on the purple fringe. And if we turn up the intensity and the spread, you can actually start to see the colors and they begin to kind of bleed off away from the center of the frame, just like real chromatic aberration. And this is just a subtle effect that can really make your lens flare look a lot more realistic. There's two modes. There's purple fringe and then there's red, blue, shift. Now that's a little intense, so we'll bring that down. You just want it to be a subtle effect where you can just see the colors bleeding close to the edge. And uh, it renders uh, nice and quick. And uh, just, uh, just a cool feature to have. Now I'll go ahead and shut that off. And we'll take a look at another cool feature. So right here you can see we can load a texture image for the on-lens simulation. But we also have a procedural object called lens orbs. So we'll close the preview. We'll come over here to lens objects. I'm going to scroll down. And we have lens orbs. We'll click on that. And uh, it's a little big and it's a little bright. But what these are is basically procedural spots that pop up wherever the light source is. So if we go down here, again, we have an illumination radius, so we can lower that so that it only lights up the ones close to the light source. Now, they may seem pretty bright, but if we look at it with our image, they're a lot more subtle. So that's another cool feature to have the show background, so you can see what your lens flare looks like when it's composited with your shot. So we'll shut it off, and uh, let's take a look at some of the settings. So we can control the number of objects. So we can have a lot or just a few. What this is mimicking is having stuff on your lens that's out of focus and sort of blurring out. We can also duplicate the lens orbs. Now it makes an exact copy. So I'm going to change the random seed so that we have a whole new seed. We'll come up to the top. We'll scale them down so they're really, really small. And in fact, we'll shut off the lens texture for the moment. We'll come down here and we'll turn the brightness up. So now they just start looking like small specks. And uh, if you're uh, creative enough, you can uh, go ahead and make them real small, turn up the number of objects. And if you want more, I'm not sure what the limit on this is, but you can just duplicate the object, change the random seed, maybe make these ones a little bigger and lower their opacity. So we really start to create 
this uh, organic looking uh, lens texture just from the procedural lens orbs elements. Then, if you want to really make it more realistic, instead of using a circle as the object shape, you can use a polygon, but you can also use a texture. And a texture are real images from real lens elements. So we click on the texture image, scroll down here, and we can pick one of the black and white ones or one of the color ones, hit OK. And we'll just turn the brightness up so you can see that a little better. But now we're using actual lens textures, so it really sells the effect. And if you want to randomize it a bit, just turn the number of elements down, duplicate the element, change the random seed so that it looks different, and then load another texture. So now we have two different textures loading in at the same time. So I've loaded a new preset, and I want to talk about the matte box controls. Now, in real life, a matte box goes around your lens and basically acts as a hood to block out lights from casting lens flares. So it's kind of an interesting uh, concept that a uh, lens flare plugin has a way to uh, block them out. But here's how it works. If I move the lens flare outside of the frame area, it stays on forever until you know it's so far away that it fades out. Now, if you want to make it more realistic where as the light source is outside of the frame, it should cut off, well, you just turn on the matte box, set it to box, um, that will be a good frame size, and if we move it outside the frame, then it sort of cuts out. Now, right now, it has a fade out, and the start range essentially is where it starts, and the fade amount is how far away it fades off. So if we set the start range to zero, that means it's going to start immediately at the edge of the frame and fade out about 20% outside. So we can extend that a bit and maybe make it fade out very little. So once it reaches a certain point, it completely cuts out rather quickly. And remember, you can go into any object, scroll down to the matte box control, and change the start range offset so that you can have certain elements cut off sooner than others.